Hey, it's Dr. Schiller. Today I want to talk in um, follow-up to a previous video in which I was discussing the, the suffering cycle and the disability cycle in chronic pain and chronic illness, especially fibromyalgia and related conditions, and how a person can understand that and start to break those cycles. And I got a very interesting response from one of my readers, one of the watchers, and I want to read you some of it because you might have similar questions. She writes, Doc, to be honest, I've made a lot of improvements, but I never got to a place of really big improvement. I've tried gradually building my exercise. I've done behavioral modifications to pace myself. I've tried to stay within my exercise threshold. I've done things to tweak a slightly low thyroid. I don't have a positive ANA or a high inflammation marker. Um, but I continue to get these really bad flare-ups of fatigue and discomfort. My pain is much better, but the fatigue and the post-exercise just malaise and feeling horrible keep catching up with me. What do I do about that? So it's such a great question because whether it's chronic pain or fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome, ME, as we call it, um, these are complex processes. And there's a few different things that can be going on. Um, and I would say there's really like four or five reasons why it can be hard to break through and actually build that activity tolerance threshold. Because that's really the issue here. For someone who wants to either prevent getting more disability, to disabled, or someone who wants to kind of climb out of that hole of disability and get more active, what stands in the way? So the first thing like we talked about in that first video is that the threshold gets lowered, right? Like everybody has a threshold within which we can actually be active physically without damaging ourselves. So I can run two or three kilometers, a mile or two or three, and I can feel okay with that. But if I tried to run a marathon, I'd be wrecked for days and maybe a week or longer. I might even get injured. Um, everyone's body, you included, you have a certain threshold of how much energy your cells can put out, how much metabolism your muscles can do. And above that, what happens is it overloads the system and creates a kind of state of biochemical toxicity and inflammation and acidosis. And if you're susceptible, because you have a th low threshold, which is expressed in fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, then that happens at much lower levels of exertion. And so you over overcome, the, you go over that threshold and suddenly this vicious cycle happens, which can increase inflammation, increase stress hormones, increase a whole bunch of different changes that, that create a flare. And so the question is, how do you work with that? So this particular person talked about is trying to stay within threshold and doing shorter workouts with less weight. And she made a certain amount of progress, but didn't really elevate her threshold like she really wanted to. So what else could be going on? So one of the things is that we know that there are hormonal and immune dysregulation that happens. We know that sometimes there are aspects of biochemical toxicity. Sometimes there are aspects of dysfunction of the mitochondria, which are the cellular energy producing organs. And all of these things are very much integrated. Your degree of inflammation, your mitochondrial function, your biochemical stress or oxidative stress are all intertwined with each other. And when you're in a susceptible place, any one of those going up too high can kind of create a little vicious cycle. Stuff like low-grade infection feeds into that. Hormonal dysfunction, whether it's your thyroid hormone, your adrenal hormones, or your sex hormones, can also make you susceptible. If you have ongoing toxicity to heavy metals or environmental pollutants, or you've got low-grade inflammation in your body from some kind of liver toxicity thing, that also makes your system more susceptible. So those things are incredibly important to address. That's a huge topic. I'm not going to try to cover that right now, although in future videos I sure hope to, God willing. Um, the, the last aspect that I want to bring up is really the stress response of the body. Because as we know, we already talked about it, that 
the stress response, the fight, flight, freeze response, which is meant to be kind of modulated by relaxation response, is intimately connected with that mitochondrial function, hormonal, immune axis. They're all intimately connected because your stress response is how your body copes. Um, and there's been all sorts of research showing that when a person has a prolonged overactive stress response or an acute stress response, it shifts immune function, it can shift hormonal function, it can shift mitochondrial function. So one of the ironic weird things about physical exercise is that it's a stressor, right? Like we know that to be true. Um, you know, there's acute exercise, there's long-term exercise, but there's been tons of research that's showing that when you do exercise, your stress hormones go up. Your autonomic system activates a stress response because it's get up and go. And the question is, when you're doing physical exercise, are you activating too much of a stress response? So all those other biochemical things are really important, but what's going on in the stress relaxation response? Is the autonomic nervous system, which consists of that stress response and relaxation response, is it kind of on the edge and so out of balance that you do a little bit of exercise and boom, you kick into a high stress state that flips off the mitochondrial function of the hormonal and so on and so on? It's possible, it's possible. And that's why personally, from my point of view, when people are dealing with low threshold states like fibro and chronic fatigue, it can be so useful to do what you could call mindful exercise. Mindful exercise means exercise with awareness and it means exercise that is deeply relaxing. So rather than going to the gym and pumping weights, even if they're small weights, or getting on the treadmill, or doing the stair stepper, even if it's a low volume, low intensity, those can be stressors. And so what you really might wanna consider is doing exercise, whether it's a very gentle yoga, Feldenkrais awareness through motion, movement, um, Tai Chi, Qigong, things that are really meditative with a lot of awareness where the physical activity is not about exertion. The physical activity is about mobilization. It's about relaxation. It's about waking up your body's natural ability to move, to breathe, to reduce co-contraction and resistance that you might have in your uh, neuromuscular system. And so it's a really good place to start if mainly what you've been doing has been typical gym exercise without awareness, without relaxation. Because gym exercise without awareness and relaxation can be a stressor. Mindful exercise can be done in a relaxing way. Let's also get clear, right? A lot of people say, well, I tried to do yoga, but then you find out what kind of yoga and it's more the aggressive kind. There are yoga practices that are really forceful. Ashtanga and Iyengar and, you know, other things that, you know, um, forgot Bikram sorry yeah that that can be fairly aggressive and that's not what I'm talking about here I'm talking about gentle Hatha yoga where it's about awareness it's about gradually coming into a soft pose not pushing too hard lots of breath lots of awareness meeting the edge and just relaxing into it so it's a different way of moving and it could be what will help you get started and help you start to build your mobility, your flexibility, your strength, your body awareness, and what you need to progress to higher levels of physical activity. So I hope that's interesting and helpful. Uh, I'm very grateful for your comments or questions. Feel free to shoot those to me either where you're finding this uh, video or through an email. So thanks for watching and looking forward to seeing you.